welcome to another Mr. Pizza Pie video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we are finally looking at Laszlo's HF950. Now you might remember this, I've had this a couple, almost a couple of years now um, and the main problem I had was the capstan motor um, was faulty and I didn't have a spare. Then I eventually found a spare, put it in found that it still ran fast. Um, then I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna have to check the servo section out. It's probably caps, but who knows, could be a transistor, you know what these machines are like. Um, then I needed the capstan motor <laughs> for something else. Um, so took it out. Then I got another capstan motor, put that in, and um, obviously same issue, um, but, uh, yeah, it's um, we're at a stage now where we can get this machine going and back to Laszlo, which would be fantastic. Now, there was a fair bit wrong with this. Um, you might remember the video on it. Um, it is in the HF950 playlist. Um, and the uh, motor um, was actually just trying trying it with the, the capstan motor uh, that I'd sourced um, was actually in an updates video. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> why it's worth saving more than anything. I mean, it's an HF 950, so they're all worth saving. Like I said, just marvellous machines. Um, but this has had a new drum. Um, and on the top here, you can actually see new drum, October 94. So, yeah, I mean... It's it's seen a lot of use since that drum was put in, but it's it's still going to have good heads. Um, I would like to think. Um, interesting screws on the top there, uh, not the black screws. But you can see it's it's a replacement unit, which is amazing, really. Um, and obviously the the routing is a little bit odd. Um, but uh, yeah, so it does need a clean as well. So um, yes, I mean, it's obviously been looked at quite comprehensively because uh, the hinges are broken. Um, and I'm pretty confident they, those didn't break when I was working on it. Um, we had the problems with that battery as well. Uh, so this had the coin type battery, which does leak and causes problems with the, uh, the skate mechanism um motor but uh yeah i suppose we ought to power it up and um just refresh our memories as to what was wrong with this okay so i'm gonna power it on hopefully it'll be all right yeah all fine so far so good Super. Let's put a cassette in and uh, see what uh, what we're up against. So just before I put the sled in and the tape in, cassette in, um, instantly see the rail is actually in excellent condition, um, and that is because those transit screws are there, and those transit screws have been used. So it really does pay to uh, to use those. It, we just save the plastic, but the plastics look good. Um, they're nice white and and still pretty fresh. So there we go. At the moment, we have nothing, which is interesting. So now there is footage on the cassette. Okay, so I'll just press pause and uh, oh dear, we do have some issues. Yeah, 
that actually sounds like it's playing at the right speed. Um, it just looks like we've got head issues, maybe, or video issues. Ooh, that's not what I was expecting. Mmm. So just forward scanning. Just wondering if I'm going to get anything at all. Oh. Okay. Well. Yeah, we've got video faults. Um. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, I have to say. Um, it seems like the cat stand is fine. I thought it was still running faster than it should. Um, but I don't think it actually is. Yeah, I would say that is actually running correctly. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll give the tape path a complete clean. Um, and take it from there, I think. A bit odd. Okay, so I've given the tape path a quick clean. Um, didn't bother showing that. Um, but it's ma mainly just making sure that the um, ACE head was um, all cleaned up, and it was. And I cleaned the video heads as well for what it's worth. Absolutely clean. The tape path looks really good. Um, the it looks very true. It looks like it's actually properly running right the way through the tape path um but i have no um data from the tape control path i mean it's not picking up anything um so my feeling is what with the way the video is and the video signal is as well we have some sort of probably power supply fault um but something is not right, and it's it's not. It's just not being powered properly. I don't think. Um, that's my gut feeling. Uh, so I suppose, well, let's investigate. A couple of days on, and um, I have made progress. Um, I've replaced a lot of these these black sticky pads, which are a complete pain in the neck. Um, you can see there what it's done to the, the crystal can there. Um, I removed all of the, the pads on the signal board. And, um, yeah, I've actually replaced them. I've, I've had to use hot glue because that's all I had. Um, I don't have any more pads. Um, but that's fine. That, that'll work. Um, and now I get... So if I press still... I am getting a picture. Um, you can see I actually get a pretty good picture. It's not the best video, to be fair, but um, but you can see I'm getting lines and distortion, and that's because I am not getting any um, control pulses. 
and uh, if I measure um, control pulses in, I'm getting nothing at all, um, which is a bit odd. It's almost like I have a break in the cabling to the um, the uh, ACE head. Um, I don't know. I, I need to check that through because it does obviously go. It goes through a, um, a separate board at the back of the, the skates. So maybe something's unplugged. I don't know. It, it just seems odd. Um, I do need to check. Um, this chip seems to be okay if I if I give it a bit of noise <laughs> um, on the appropriate pin. Um, the the counter does actually advance. I actually managed to get forty two seconds. Uh, of advance, so I suspect that all the electronics from here on in, and this chip is all it, it's all good. Um, I'm not suspecting anything with that. It's what's before that. There is um, a stage. Can't remember exactly what it is. Um, this goes through. I think it's this chip here, um, and then it goes to this chip. So I need to check that. Um, but I'm suspecting it's it's a physical break somewhere between the ace head and um, and the actual connector here. So really odd. Um, but yeah, pressing play, obviously, it just disappears to nothing. So yeah, no control pulses. So when you press pause, basically it, it unmutes. Um, it forces an unmute um, of the video signal. Oh, that's actually quite good. Yeah, you can see the noise bar starting to come in. If it's getting control pulses, you shouldn't really get that. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going through the circuit diagram now, actually. But, uh, yeah. So, I'll crack on. Okay, so um, I am going to change the ACE head. Um, slight method in my madness. I, I'm getting no control pulses at all at the, the head um, uh, as it comes into the um, SS50 board. Um, and that does sound a bit rough. I'll have to have a look at that. Um, but... Uh, yeah, um, the other thing that makes me think it is the head. I have had these go bad before um, with sort of high hours. This has had a replacement drum, uh, albeit in 1994, um, but this drum is also quite worn. I do tend to find with high wear, these fail, these go bad. Um, just wondering the best way to do this. Yeah, I might just be able to get away with not having to remove the carriage. Um, but we'll have to see. It could actually become quite involved if I have to. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, yes, I have a, a head. Um, thank you, Aaron. Um, everything's getting used. <laughs> um and it says it's a good head, it's perfect, so that's great. Um, I'm debating whether I'm going to take all the cables out or whether I am going to not. Um, whether I'm just going to solder onto the back of the head, but we'll see, we'll see as we go along. So, my original idea was to. Um, remove the whole head assembly um, and that involves undoing that screw there and then that screw there basically the whole assembly comes off but if you undo just this one screw here and then work it free um, the assembly that it's holding basically it all springs apart there's a spring that's actually keeping this in tension against the, the the assembly that is screwed down by those two screws and uh i can then get to the solder um pads as well to uh replace uh, 
the leads, which I think is going to be the tidiest way to do it. I don't, I don't want to hack all this apart. Um, I mean, I've done it before, and it's not, it's not a major, major thing to do. But it doesn't. The loom doesn't always. It just never seems to really go back that well. So I'd rather sort of try and keep this intact if I can. Um, and uh, I mean, I think these are the are from the audio head, AC head. Um, and then I think it's that one. That one's actually the um, control um, head. And then this is the audio. Um, audio and arrays. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of bodging this a bit um, because I'm not removing, really, you want to remove this. Um, but I don't want to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see. Really sorry I didn't film all of this. Um, it was, A, really awkward, and B, escalated really quickly. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what happened? Um, I started removing the head, and it was obvious it wasn't going to clear the, 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 um, uh, the basket. So... Um, took the slate motor mechanism out, took off the, um, actuator for the, the, uh, basket, uh, flipped the little, um, locking tab there, pulled the drawer out, the skate out, and, um, managed to pull it pull the, the head mechanism off it was tight it was um catching actually on the end of here i could have actually un, uh, removed this would have made life easier but uh, as it happened it i just sort of pulled it gently back from there and it slipped off so it is there um i should be able to um I mean, I will remove this, but I should be able to desolder that and solder the new one on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be tight, but uh, I think we can do it. Okay, so my idea is to remove the board. Um, and hopefully not put too much heat in. Now, well, this is going to work. Pretty good. Is this, this earth? I think it's an earth. of it is free. And if I can just suck that last bit off. Yeah, sold and mop that bit off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that, that large tab, that was just for the, the actual ground for the head. So the screening can, if you like, at the back. So uh, it's, it's cool. It's it's actually really cool. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, remove the the old head next. So I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see. But we'll give it a go. Yeah, let's see, it's sort of great on that. 
This just a little bit too big for the the bit that I have. Actually, I probably could get bigger bits, but that looks to be all good. Obviously, not so worried about this head because it's uh, apparently faulty. We'll see. Uh, could be doing this for nothing. But that's half the fun. It's actually coming away nicely. So the head itself, apart from the finger marks, it doesn't look terrible. Um, there's no sort of grooves or anything really, so I'm still not too sure. Uh, whether this is going to sort anything out, but anyway, it, I mean, everything points to this being the fault, so um, obviously, you have to be a bit more careful putting this, um, especially putting it the right way. Uh, no, it is that way, isn't it? No, it's. Oh dear. Uh, that way. Okay. Slight like moments of madness there. So that's on. So uh, to make sure I haven't bent anything. I'm sure, I haven't because it went on nice and cleanly. So I got that soldered up and uh, put it all back together.
Okay, so the new head's in, or the replacement head. Um, I'm still not totally convinced I've got the spring right, um, but I've soldered it up. Um, it's a little bit of a fiddle, but I found a good technique to do it in the end, coming from the uh, from the back of the deck um, with the soldering iron and then the solder. I actually used my old solder from uh, the 90s rather than this new stuff, which um, should be good, but this doesn't seem to flow so well. Um, and then I um, have put everything else back together. Um, like I said, I'm not happy with the spring. I, I don't know quite what's going on there. Uh, I might have to take this apart again and just investigate what's going on. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, just a bit confused at that. And then I put the um, obviously the sled back, a uh, skate back in, and uh, reassembled the. Uh, the loading mechanism for it. So let's power it on and try a tape. And I am very intrigued if this is actually, uh, um, oh, that's interesting. Um, motor here just moved quite a lot out of alignment there. Um, sort of, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it seems all, all good so far. Now I don't, I don't expect this to work straight out the the gate, um, just because obviously the head height will be wrong. Uh, but we shall see. Yeah, I can hear it doing things. Uh, so, I would think the head is too low. And just by virtue of what I was trying to achieve, I'm setting the head too low. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> I've got a bit of a problem there. Uh, yeah, so I put the anti-static drain in, and that appears to have got, yeah, it's got the wrong side. So it's actually, in putting it together, I've actually managed to get it the wrong side of the going to be a pain in the neck now because I've bent that round. Oh, let's try again. Um, so that's what it should do. Well, I still don't have anything. Um, I mean, alignment should be fairly... ...good, because I've kept... I've kept the original... Um, mounting plate, which should be somewhere near with this new head. Um, the heads are actually really very um, precision built. So the only thing that's changed is the head height, but I wind that down. I think it does go most of the way down. You know, it's, it's, there's not an awful lot of play in it. In fact, let's line it up with the, with the the, the paint and assume that should be right. Um, I mean, 
I still have excellent spills. Uh, that does seem... Oh, uh, maybe not. I was going to say, it seems like I've got some sort of... Yeah, but I haven't. Mm. So it wasn't the head, probably, uh, unless I've not aligned it properly. Okay, I'm going to do some more checks, and um, then I'll come back and uh, tell you what I found, and show you what I found, and yeah. Hmm, interesting. Well, I'm so happy I can, I can shoot this, actually. Uh, holding the camera and, yeah, holding this cap. Put my finger across the cap here. Um, I get a picture. Uh, I can do this without dropping things. So I get a picture, and... Um, the it, playback's actually running fast, um, so I'm I'm actually now suspecting um, a servo problem again, um, an additional servo problem over the cat stem. I do have now sync uh, good sync pulses, and to be fair, uh, if I take my finger away, the picture will cut in and out. Um, Probably won't do it now, but it, it's. It, I'm getting a much stronger um, signal, so it was worth doing. I think that head, but that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the fault. And to be quite fair, um, if I discovered the fault, then I probably would have got away with not changing that that head. But it's done. It's a good head. It'd be better than what was in there. So I, I'm I'm not too upset, but. Uh, yeah, so, more fun and games. So things aren't making a lot of sense. I now have a decent um, control pulse from the ace head. And the um, outputs and voltages, well, yeah, the voltages on the um, capstan are all good. But it's still running fast. If I turn down the... Um, CFS, uh, what's the capstan, uh, free spin uh, speed. And if I turn it right the way down, I'm almost there, but I still don't get any um, counter uh, advance um, unless I sort of introduce noise uh, across this capacitor here. So I can see what's going on and it'll unmute and the counter will advance. Um, but obviously it's going fast because the cat stand's still running fast. But uh, it's just really weird that I've got fast cap stand with a good cap stand, and the old cap stand motor was like running like the clappers. I mean, it was, it, it was totally duff. And I just wonder what's happened. Um, but <sighs> sort of going through, I mean, I've, to be fair, I've not gone through every single stage, not like I did with the HF100 um, a while back, to really find out what's going on. But, uh, yeah, it, it sort of <laughs> just the basic checks show everything is, is working as it should, except I still have a fast cap stand. So I have another board. Um, I've liberated this from... Um, another HF950, which is actually a pretty nice machine, um, albeit with a few faults um, that need to be sorted. Um, I th I'm, I'm not convinced this board doesn't have faults as well, but I seem to remember it has different, a different issue. So I'm going to swap it over and just see what happens. So, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so board's in. Um, lots of different connectors. There's an awful lot to sort of make sure you get plugged in. I think I've done everything, um, but we'll soon find out, I'm sure. So, I'll 
I still have nothing. Uh, still. I'll just have a bit of sound. Oh, I don't think I was getting that before. I do wonder what's going on. Oh, I've got sound and search. Well, I seem to have a Bross concert. <laughs> It's not muting the sound. Okay, so that board that I took out is fine. Oh, that is really very interesting. It's not muting the sound. I've had this before, and do you think I can remember what it is? Well, at least I know this board's okay. I mean, obviously it's not aligned or anything, so head speed's a bit all over the place. Hmm. Right, okay, so we are getting somewhere. Um, right, I'm going to swap the board back, uh, put this board on the side to put back in the machine I nicked this from. And uh, yeah, that's actually really good news, to be fair. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So actually that board swap proved nothing because <laughs> this board is faulty. Uh, despite my greatest hopes. Um, interesting that this has the modification panel as well. Um, I really need to go through this with a fine tooth comb and work out what's going on. It's, it's just crazy, really. Um, yeah, let's crack on. So lots more work done. Um, I did give it a partial recap, um, just the sort of large value, more suspect values, like 10 volt um, electrolytics and um, yeah, some of the, the higher values. And the uh, main reason I did that is I found a couple um, that I changed as part of my fault finding. Um, and they were actually pretty bad, high ESR and um, the values are all over the place. So I thought, well, blanket changed the, the key culprits. Um, and um, I have to say, they all checked okay. Um, a lot were low in value. Um, a couple had some ESR, sort of one, two ohms ESR, um, but not enough really to make a difference. And it didn't make a difference. So that's actually quite nice to know that uh, yeah, you can get away with that. Um, I have followed the circuit through, and don't worry, I will run through all of this at the end once I've fixed it and found the problem. I will run through this in detail. But um, I have now followed the control pulse right the way through to IC301. IC301 controls the motor um, head motor, drum motor, and the capstan um, speeds, and um, there's all sorts of calculations um, relating to the trick modes as well. Um, IC302 also does an awful lot of that um, with op amps um, and um, some sort of processing. This does an awful lot, this chip, uh, but this is your main sort of servo control. Um, and what's interesting, and I sort of clocked this the first time I lifted the board, and then I sort of dismissed this um, because of the soldering down here. But this has been replaced. Um, so 
this has been looked at before for this fault, and it sort of tarnishes the <laughs> the, the fault finding for me a, a bit because somebody else has been in here and obviously given up. Um, I assume they didn't swap the chips back. Um, but to be honest, I don't think it is that chip, even though it, it sort of points to that being the fault. Um, now, the thing I'm getting now, um, or that I'm noticing, is on pin 29 of this chip, there should be the 4.43 megahertz um, signal from video, and I am getting 533 kilohertz, um, should be 0.7 peak to peak, and it isn't. It's um, down in the millivolts. So I think that's going to be my next protocol, and just to work back and find out why that 4.43 meg is not there. And I think if I can find that out, I think it'll work. I think it'll be fine. Everything else seems to be fine. All the trick modes work. Everything's hunky-dory. Um, but I just, you know, I'm not getting any um, control pulses as far as the machine is concerned with unmuting video and whatever. But the 4.43 uh, meg would potentially cause that that issue because yeah it's it, it's not calculable um to generate those pulses because I, I believe those pulses are actually generated by this chip for the the logic to then deal with it and do the displays and uh, the display and all the rest of it so um yeah i don't think it's that chip but I do think we've got a 4.43 megahertz um, oscillation video issue coming into this chip. So I shall continue my work. Okay, so a bit more on the, um, the 4.43. Uh, 4.43 is actually coming in on pins one and two of uh, uh, connector um, 302 and if I put the scope and I've had to bodge this a bit I've lost my leads uh, you can see there got a frequency of 566 kilohertz which is what's going into the um, the IC and about 190-ish millivolts uh, RMS so, uh, I do have a problem with 4.43, and that is not on the SS50 board, so I um, need to do a bit more research and to see how that arrives at the board, and then uh, do some more probing. Okay, so lots more work done, and um, things have not turned out too well. Um, I have 1.5 volts um, being supplied to the um, capstan as a, a reference voltage, which is far too high. Um, adjusting CFS, um, the capstan free speed makes no difference at all. So I've got something going on in the circuitry um, that actually drives um, the control voltage for the capstan motor. Um, but while I was running it, and I wasn't actually doing anything at all, I wasn't even <laughs> probing at the time, suddenly I have another fault. And uh, if I just turn it on, you'll see what, what I mean. So, standby momentarily comes on, goes back off, hit a relay kick back off, and I have that. On the display, the SC, um, and a couple of other um, bits there on the display. If I press and hold the power button, it does go off. So, um, just like your PC, press and hold the button, and it, it does um, uh, send the standby signal to the processor. But, oh gosh, what what's going on now? I mean, it's it doesn't help that these 
bodges, the, 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 I say bodges, the, the Sony modifications, um, they're falling apart. I mean, it's literally, they're so rotten. Um, those black pads have caused so much damage. Um, so I've got that. I did fix this one. It's floating at the moment. Um, obviously, I've done the ones underneath and hot glued those. Um, I might just check those to make sure they're okay and nothing's adrift. But um, uh, <laughs> it's just, um, what do I do? So, what would you do? Um, I mean, if you're used to working on these machines, what would you do at this stage? Would you just say, ah, if it's doing all of that and more, um, which it is, <laughs> uh, do you just say, well, it's time to call it quits and um, use it for spares, or should I persevere? Um, I, I'm still fairly confident that the actual semiconductors, the, the chips, are fine. I don't believe I've got like damaged firmware um, or anything weird going on there. But um, obviously I've got something else that's gone bad on this board. And the SS50 board in particular is really troublesome on these machines now. Um, and... Some of it is down to those black pads just rotting out the components, but and capacitors going bad. Um, uh, it seems to be the Elna ones seem to be not great, um, especially those 10 volt ones. But uh, oh, it just seems such a shame because we're so close and yet so far. And the thing is, I have a stack more. HF 950s with similar faults, and I don't have a good SS50 board, um, as you saw earlier, to sort of swap out and maybe have a play. But I know it's this board. Um, I did change the um, 4.47 meg, um, sorry, 4.43 meg um, crystal, and well. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, I now have 4.43 on the um, input to this chip. But I, I don't really think that was faulty in the first place. Um, I, I don't know quite what, what was going on there. But uh, yeah, it's just... I seem to have all sorts of random faults. And I found even when I was sort of going through... Um, the voltages on um, the connector here, uh, which is, so you've got this here was the FG um, and the power for the FG. So that's the the pickup, the Hall effect, if you like, for the um, capstan. And then measuring the voltages across here, they all seem fine. Um, but uh, yeah, it, the, the, the capstan sort of uh, speed voltage was high. But I don't know. Is it worth persevering? Let me know in the comments. Um, yeah. So, it's a no fix at the moment. Um, I'm going to mothball this um, for a little bit now. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this. Um, it, it, honestly, with the time I've spent, it's not worth doing. And um, I've done it just because I feel guilty <laughs> um, that I've had this machine for so long, mainly because the capstan motor was bad. Um, I've spent so long um, sourcing that and finding that. And uh, yeah, and then obviously finding all these other faults. So. Yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, bit of a funny one. Shame it's not a, a, a win. Um, and as you can imagine, I am gutted. <laughs> I'm really gutted. I really thought we could get this one going, but uh, it seems to be one fault after another um, and just inconsistent as well. And the fact that it's been worked on before with that chip being replaced, um, somebody else had 
a number of frustrating hours trying to get this machine going. So um, with that, thank you very much for watching. Um, like and subscribe as well. It really means a lot to me. And uh, see you in another video. Bye for now.